So just as I showed you how to complete a debate ballot, I want to show you how to complete a speech ballot using online balloting. It's very similar, but there are, um, there are a few little differences that I wanted to highlight so that you could see those differences now. Um, just as I mentioned with the debate video, you can see that I received a text showing my pairing. So here I'm in room 122. It's got my name, I'm judging impromptu, and the start time. And the teams are the, the competitors that I'll be judging. And the message, it says, please head to round when ready. And we can customize that message to say whatever we want. So just make sure that you're looking at that and, and being well informed by the tab room. So just like with debate, we're going to log into our tab room account. And I'm going to switch my to my new judging account that I've made. And once we go in, we can see that here's our previously entered results. This is from the debate example that I used. So here's our public forum round, and I uh, judged round one, flight two. And I had mentioned in the previous video that you can edit the feedback. So if you're just wanting to get that ballot in and you want to come back and there's a few things you wish you would have said or some things you want to change, you just click that edit feedback button, and then you can alter the reason for decision in the comments. Now that won't stay there the entire time. Uh, that access will only be given to you up until the tournament is over. So once the tournament is done, the results are posted, you won't be able to edit that feedback from that point on, but any time during the tournament, edit feedback will be available to you. So we'll be in the room with Impromptu in room 122, and here's our competitors, our panel of, um, of Impromptuers. And so once they're all there, we're going to click Start Round. And we're going to, just as a, a reminder, we only click that when we're ready to go in the room. We click start round and it's even a little bit more simplified of a ballot. So once the page loads, you will see the list of competitors by code. Um, and in some tournaments going forward, they may be names, but for the for some of our higher stakes tournaments like state, we just use codes. And then the rank. And it's very easy to do. Um, so We've heard all of these impromptu speeches, and again on paper you may want to keep some notes just in case something happens along the way, and then we're going to rank them in their order of how well that they did. All right, and then again we can just submit that ballot, and then we can provide comments. Now these comments, as it says, will go to all the participants. But if you wanted to make specific comments about certain impromptu speeches or give some critique or feedback, so let's say we wanted to give it for competitor 139, that will just go specifically to the coaches, the tab room, and to competitor 139. So we can say, you did a great job, right? Um, 139 was ranked first. And maybe there's something about 105 we ranked second, that needs a little work. You know, um, your speech was not long enough. Whatever. You can put in there, and then we will save the comments on the ballot, and we will see uh, the codes in the middle. Now, this is the part that I think is important to highlight that throws everybody off. I've had many people come to me and go, wait, it keeps changing the order. And you'll see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Please do not look at that. That's not an important feature. That's the order of which they spoke. Um, and that is what's listed on the pairing itself. Um, it's not super important, nor does it make much of a difference to the tournament. It looks like these are the placements, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. However, the placements are what we originally gave them, one through six, under this rank section. And I think this is probably an area that Tabroom could do better with when it comes to online balloting um, and in the way that it presents its results. Um, but just as a note, remember that you're looking to verify on the left side the ranks you provided and to those codes. Don't worry about this spoke column. And once you have it completed, and you know it's correct, we'll click yes, confirm it. And again, it brings us to our homepage where we can edit the feedback. So for like, oh, that one kid that in, who took fourth, I really wanted to give some more feedback to, and I didn't get a chance. You can go in and give them more robust feedback if you wanted to. If you had an additional judging commitment, it would then 
up here at the top and with that same box that says start round, but we know that none are posted yet. And so if you're just waiting for the round to start, you can continue to refresh your page to see if that will come up for you and give you a new commitment. And so that is the most effective way to complete a speech ballot. Um, and you can therefore then see your history as well as edit your feedback if you need it. I'll make one last video if you're interested on how to complete a Congress ballot online as well.